one of the most important ideas in probability and statistics is the concept of a distribution. We will understand what a distribution is by picking up one of the most famous distributions called a Gaussian distribution and understanding it. Right? So you might have come across a, plot, a, a shape like this, which looks like a bell-shaped curve. This is one of the most recognizable shapes in probability and statistics. And oh, by the way, we just saw such a shape when we were looking at uh, your, uh, so if this is the, if this is my petal length, the, the probability density function of my petal length of Setosa, Versicola and Virginica flowers actually look like the bell-shaped curves that are very, very representative of a Gaussian distribution. Right? So this is a very, very popular distribution that's used extensively in, um, in, in statistics. And we'll see, we'll see, we'll learn everything about it one by one. Right? So before we go and understand it, the bell-shaped curve that you saw is nothing but the probability density function of a Gaussian distribution, of a Gaussian distributed random variable. So let's assume x is a continuous random variable. Let's assume x is a continuous random variable and if x has a PDF, right, a probability density function that looks like your bell-shaped curve, then we say x has a distribution which is a Gaussian distribution. We'll, 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 I'll also introduce you some notation on how to represent what a distribution of, uh, how, to, how to represent the distribution of a random variable in a while. But before we go into it, you might ask, okay, why should I learn about this distribution? Because a lot of things in nature actually follow Gaussian distribution. Not everything, but certainly some very important thing. So for example, heights of people, similarly weights of people, tend to follow a Gaussian distribution. Similarly, oh, we just saw your petal length and sepal lengths, which are actually measurements of uh, sepals and petals of real flowers. They all seem to look like bell curves. We'll see whether they're actually Gaussian distribution Gaussian distributed or not a little later in this in this chapter. But for now, they all look like your bell-shaped curves, right? So the, uh, Gaussian distribution occurs a lot in nature, especially in natural phenomena like heights and weights. It is also connected to a very important idea in statistics called central limit theorem that we'll learn a little later. But just take my word for it right now that it's extremely widely found distribution in nature, right? Having said that, you might ask, okay, why are we learning about these distributions? Why do I learn about these distributions? Why do I learn about these distributions? Um, we will see. We will see why we are learning about distributions after we learn some properties of distribution and how it is how it is useful. But in short, I could say that distributions are very, very simple models of natural behavior. Very, very simple models. For example, if you tell me that uh, your petal lengths of setos of flowers follow Gaussian distribution, Let's assume we know that your petal lengths follow a Gaussian distribution. I can tell you a bunch of properties about your petal lengths without even having having without having measured any of your petal lengths. So it's a very, very simple model to summarize all the information about a random variable or a physical or a physical measurement, like a length or a height or a weight, right? So by the way, all of your petal lengths can be thought of petal length, sepal length, everything can be thought of as a continuous random variable. Right, uh, and whatever you, whatever values that you get are basically sampling from the distribution. Right. Anyway, if some of the terms are alien to you, uh, you, you I promise you will surely understand it. But before we go into it, let's understand Gaussian distribution a little more. I promise you, by the end of this subtopic, you'll understand everything about distributions. But please bear with me. There are a lot of interconnected areas uh, that we need to cover one by one slowly. Only at the end of it, we'll get the whole picture. Right. So now I'm on a page of Wikipedia corresponding to something called a normal distribution. Gaussian distribution is also called as normal distribution. We'll see, we'll see what is what is a standard normal distribution in a while. So this is so this plot, if x is a random variable, if x is a continuous random variable, if x is a continuous random variable, then this is your probability density function. Right? So your probability density function of your Gaussian random variables look like your small hills or, or your bells. Right. So if you look at it, if you look at it uh, on the top right here, you have you have a very nice legend which shows you two values, mu and sigma square. Right. So here mu is nothing but so let's say let's take the blue curve here. Right. For a Gaussian random variable, 
mu is nothing but the average value or the mean value we learned about concepts called mean and variance right mu is nothing but your mean and sigma square is nothing but your variance so if x is if x has a gaussian distribution or if x comes if x behaves like a like a gaussian distributed random variable and if the mean of x if a mean of x is 0 right and if its variance is 0.2 then its pdf will look like this will look exactly like this like like your dark blue line here like this dark blue line here now what you could say is what if what are these what are which basically means uh, there's a very interesting thing which is if you tell me your mean and your variance your sigma square is nothing but variance if you tell me that your random variable x follows gaussian distribution and if you give me its mean and variance nothing else you just give me these two values i can tell you what its pdf is right so these two values are called the parameters of the distribution so your mean and variance are called your parameters of the distribution so for example uh, you could say that okay i have my random variable petal length so let, let's let's go and look up uh, look at this data for a second so imagine if somebody tells me that the setosa's petal length have a mean of 1.5 suppose if somebody tells me that setosa's petal length follows gaussian distribution let 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 somebody i'm not saying it is ex actually uh, it actually follows gaussian distribution let and if somebody tells me that the mean of these values is 1.5 and the variance uh, the variance seems to be small here right let's assume the variance is uh, i don't know i think we computed it earlier i'll just i'll just pick a value here let's assume the variance is 0.25 right let let again this is all let the moment you tell me that mu is 1.5 and sigma square is 0.25, I can quickly draw the, the, the distribution without having even seen one value of, of petal lengths of setosa. So if you just give me these two values, I know what the PDF looks like. As soon as I know what PDF looks like, I can compute my CDF, right? So all the information that is there in 50 observations can be summarized very succinctly by just using these two values given the fact that see by the way if you don't if i don't know that your random variable x or your petal length is gaussian distributed if i don't know its gaussian distribution these two values are not useful so the first thing that i need to know is that my petal length is gaussian distributed if if this is true then all i need to know then all i need to know to plot its pdf is just the mu and the variance right now let's see let's see let's see how the shape of a gaussian distribution changes as mu and sigma change right so by the way uh, for your both red so if you look at these two these three point these three uh, plots here your blue red and uh, yellowish plot here all of them have a mean of zero right all of them have a mean of zero and as variance increases so the variance of your blue plot is 0.2 the variance of your red one is one your variance of your yellow line is five so we do know that variance is a measure of spread right variance is a measure of spread it's also called a scale in in probability and statistics okay so if if my variance is small then my probability density function my pdf is going to be peaked and thin like this as my variance increases as my variance increases my probability density function is going to get fatter and fatter and shorter and shorter right so uh, at the same time so your very so that's 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 what happens if your variance changes what about your mu if your mu changes so for this green line here your mu is at minus 2 right so the peak of your hill in your probability distribution probability density function of a gaussian distribution is often at mu it's exactly at mu actually so mu is the most often found value because what is the height of a uh, in a pdf the height represents how often we find these points right what is the probability of finding a value uh, around minus two so in a, in a gaussian distribution function the peak of your hill in your for your pdf is at mu right so if somebody if somebody uh, plots a pdf like this and if i know that it's gaussian random variable uh, that it's a gaussian distribution if somebody says this is true and if somebody says then immediately i know since this is the maximal value 
immediately I know that my mu is equals to 2. Right? So let me introduce you some simple notation. Since we know that the parameters, the parameters of a Gaussian distribution, parameters of a Gaussian distribution are, are simply mu and sigma, sigma square, which is nothing but variance. Which means if you just give me my mean and variance, I can tell you everything about the probability di probability density function of a of a Gaussian of distributed random variable. So it's often written like this. I'll just introduce you to some notation. Let's assume x is a random variable. I say that x follows a Gaussian distribution or a normal distribution with mean mu and variance sigma square. So how to read it? It is x. This is nothing but x follows your n represents your normal or Gaussian distribution, right? And what are the what are the parameters of my distribution? Mu here is my mean, and sigma square here is my variance. So if somebody says x is normally distributed with a mean of zero and a variance of two, right? As soon as I, as soon as I see this, I can plot I can plot the probability density function of x with mean at zero, and we'll see how variance plays in this, right? Um, your variance probably will be here and this will be minus 2 here. This will be minus 4, this will be plus 4 and so on and so forth. Okay. Uh, we will see, we'll see how to how to get this shape. Right. So is the bell shape more understandable today? The peak of the bell shape is always at mu and your variance, suppose if I have two random variables, let's just again take a quick example here. Let's assume I have a random variable x with a mean of 0 and a variance of 2. Let's assume I have another random variable y again with a mean at 0 but a variance of 4 then I know that my x is like this if my x is like this then my y would be would be fatter and shorter right because y has a higher variance than your x right variance basically talks about spread so this spread is much more than uh, the spread of than the spread of your random variable x so uh, Having understood this, let's go into some more mathematical details of a Gaussian distribution. All this is fun. We have seen the graphical part of it. We have understood, uh, we have understood the bell-shaped curve, but let's go into slight details of math. So if I know that x is normally distributed with a mu and sigma square, let's assume x is a random variable. It could be your petal length, sepal length, your height of students, or weights of students. If x is normally distributed with a mean of mu and a variance of sigma square, then I can quickly say, the probability of x equal to some value x, small x. Remember, this is a random variable. This is a value. So let's assume if x is heights of students, then this could be probability that height of a student is equal to 160 centimeters. This is an actual value. That's why I wrote it in small x. Right? You can write it as an expression like this. Probability of a random variable x being equal to a value x, small x. The small x could be 160 centimeters or something like this. This is a random variable capital X, right? So this is often short, in short written as probability of x equals to, this is, this is a notation that we saw earlier, right? Uh, at, at the start of this chapter, it's a very simple notation to follow. So this is nothing but 1 by root 2 pi sigma exp minus x minus mu square by 2 sigma square, right? So of course, this looks very, very daunting on the surface, but prom I promise you, I'll simplify this for you. I'll give you the intuition and I'll give you the, I'll give, I'll, I'll break this up and explain it piece by piece. Trust me, I will do that. I promise you that. Uh, have, having promised you that, let's go and understand what is EXP here. First, let's go and understand. EXP is nothing but E par. So EXP of X, is nothing but e power x. It is the exponent, it's exponential function where e is the base of natural logarithm. Right? So because it's it's harder to write it, write this whole expression in, in the superscript, we just typically write it this way. Right? But exp of x is nothing but e power x. You must have encountered this in your high school uh, when you're learning logarithms, right? Now, having said that, to understand this function, let's 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 simplify it. Let's assume, let us assume that mu equals to 0 and sigma equals to 1 or sigma square equals to 1, which, which means sigma equals to 1, right? Let's assume this for a second. 
let's just assume this so as to simplify and understand this math then your probability of finding a random variable x equals to x see whenever i don't write it all i mean is capital random variable x equals to x is 1 by root 2 pi my sigma is 1 here right exp of my 2 it's basically half here right because sigma square is 1 and x mu is 0 half of x square right this is much more easy to digest okay so uh, let, let me break this up again so we assume that mu equals to 0 and sigma square equals to 1 and i'll i'll explain you the details of uh, i'll explain you what this shape looks like okay so just bear with me so what do we have here we have probability of x equals to 1 by root 2 pi exp of minus half x square so what does this mean so so if, if this was equal to y right and if you're trying to plot this function let's try to plot this function right so uh, this this you can think of this as a constant right this is this is basically a constant right this is basically a constant right because it's 1 by root 2 pi so you can ignore that this is also a constant uh, sorry you should keep the half is also a constant right so this is also a constant so if you have to simplify this further this looks like y equals to exp of minus x square if see what i've done here is first i've written this very crazy looking formula i've simplified it by making my mu zero and sigma square equals to one and i'm further simplifying it by removing the constants what is the shape of this if i have to plot this shape right because the, because uh, I, I'm, by just removing constants the the form of the equation still doesn't change when you plot this function when you plot this function what you get is your bell-shaped curve now let me explain you what it is right your mu of course is zero right and what it says is so this is your x right so your mu equals to zero right um, so this is your random variable x let's assume this is y which is nothing but probability of x right so your y is nothing but p of x right now what it's saying here is this as x increases this, this is extremely important as x increases so let's assume my x is 0 at that point i have a very high value here right if my x equals to 0 what happens to y if my x equals to 0 it's e power 0 so y is going to be e power of 0 with with, with these constants put in so if i put in the constants here what do i get 1 by root 2 pi exp of 0 exp of 0 is 1 right so the maximum value here here in this case with the mu equals to 0 and variance equals to and let's assume my sigma square equals to 1 then my maximum value here is going to be 1 by root 2 pi right because it's a constant that i'm using but just let's drop the constants to get to get to understand the shape better so what it's saying here is so what is this as x so what happens as x increases let's understand what happens to y as x increases which means as you're moving on this axis your y is going to reduce right because this function right if, if you if you go and if, if we just look through this function here carefully right as x increases what happens as x increases right your minus x square is going to reduce because it's negative right your x square this is this is what it is your x minus x square is going to reduce as minus x square reduces exponent of minus x square is also going to reduce right so the first thing is as x increases right as x moves away from goes away from zero that's what i meant as x goes in this direction your y is going to reduce as you see in this plot first observation second observation as x goes away from zero even on the negative side right so what happens if x equals to so it doesn't matter right because what we have is minus x square so whether x is positive or negative x square is going to be the same value right so which means whether you have x equals to 2 or x equals to minus 2 the value is going to be exactly the same right which means this function is symmetric so the first thing is okay let, let me write the conclusions here one by one carefully the first conclusion in your gaussian distribution is that as x go, moves away from moves away from mu your y reduces second 
it is symmetric this plot or this function that we just saw is symmetric right so this is your y this is your x this is your mu equals to 0 right it is symmetric because whether you take x equals to 2 or x equals to minus 2 you're going to get the same value in this function here right so the function we have here is i'll just write it here probability of x equals to y which is nothing but exp of minus x square exp of minus x square again this is the simplest form i'm trying to explain you the bell, bell shaped curve here right the third thing is now we know that as we move away your y reduces but how fast does y reduce remember y is not just reducing if if y was let's assume if if y was exp of minus x let let if if y was exp of minus x what does it mean it means that it's going to reduce exponentially right what is exp of minus x it's nothing but 1 by e power x right which means as x increases your y is going to reduce because it's 1 by it's going to reduce exponentially right but what we have here is exp of minus x square and what is exp of minus x square your probability of x can be written as 1 by e power x square which means your plot as you're moving away from your mean is not just reducing exponentially it's actually reducing square of exponential because you have a square term here so it's actually reducing extremely fast here it's reducing really really fast which you'll notice better when you see this as you move away so this is very important so when you go from x equals to 1 so this is x equals to 0 right let's look at the blue plot here right this is x, x equals to 1 by the time you reach x equals to 0 so here what what value do you have you have some roughly a value close to 0 0.1 right at x equals to 1 we have a value of 0 0.1 for this dark blue line but as soon as i go to 2 i almost have reached 0 which means it's falling extremely fast right so this bell shaped curve actually is reducing exponentially with a quadratic function here right it's 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 not just reducing exponentially it's reducing with a quadratic function inside it which means it's falling really 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 fast right so that, that that's one of the important properties of your pdf that your pdf of so as x moves away from you as x moves away from you your y reduces exponential of squared right so x squared right that is important because as you're moving away so this is where this is what this is the value of x going to be so as you're moving away it's going to fall very 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 fast let's understand what does this fall actually mean with a small example right so what do we have we have y equals to exp of minus x square right so if let's assume x equals to 0 okay then what is y then y equals to 1 for this function let's not forget about problem let's not worry about properties then y equals to 1 if x equals to 1 what is y my y is exp of minus 1 right if x equals to 2 my y is going to be exp of minus 2 oh, sorry minus 4 x square right so let's say what is this e what, this is 1 by e power 1 this is 1 by e power 4 let's let's look at what these values are uh, if, if x equals to 3 right your y is going to be exp of minus 9 which is 1 by e power 9 right let's understand what these values are let's just go to google quickly and find out what these values are um, so if i say let me just clear this up if i just say exp of oh, sorry 1 by exp of 1 okay faster it's 0 0.3678 right so it's 0 0.36 0 0.3678 right what happens what is 1 by e power 4 my 1 by e power 4 is going to be 0 0.018 it's already falling very fast 0 0.018 what about 9 It's already point triple zero one two three. Wow, I really like that number. Point triple zero one two three. So even though my x is increasing, my x here increased 
only by two times here my x increased only by three times but look at what my y has changed my y literally from here to here even from here to here there is almost a hundred x decrease right because i have two additional decimal places here even though my x increased only by one right this is this is a difference of one and a half right because two into 1.5 is three but my y has increased my y has been reduced by 100x now even look here right this is a difference of 2x but this is a difference this is a crazy high difference right because this is uh so if i do 0 0.18 by 0.36 right roughly 0.36 so 18 is 36 so i can just say uh, point um, so i could say 0 0.18 by 0 0.36 by 10 so this is 1 by 2 this is a reduction of 20, 1, 20x so here is a reduction of 20x even though this has reduced only by 2x even though this has sorry increased by 2x even though this has increased only by 1.5x my reduction here is 100x right that's what i mean when i say exponentially quadratic drop so if it was exponential drop it wouldn't have been this severe so the shape of your gaussian distribution is it falls exponentially quadratically 